Most people don't realize this. They think intelligence is something you're born with. They think some people are just naturally good at studying, naturally motivated, naturally smart. But the truth is far simpler. Your intelligence is shaped by what your brain finds rewarding. And what your brain finds rewarding is shaped by dopamine. Dopamine is not pleasure like most people say. Dopamine is desire. Dopamine is drive. It's the force that pushes you to do something. It tells your brain, this is worth effort. Or, this is boring and pointless. So imagine this. When you wake up, your dopamine level is calm, balanced, and neutral. It's right where it needs to be for your brain to learn easily, to focus, to remember, to think clearly. At this level, studying is not painful. It's not a fight. It's actually interesting. But the second you open your phone, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube shorts, messages, notifications, anything, your brain experiences a dopamine spike, a very fast, very intense surge. You didn't earn it. You didn't work for it. It was given instantly. Your brain interprets that like a loud signal. This is good. This is exciting. This is what we chase. But dopamine cannot stay high. It always comes back down. And after a spike comes the drop, not back to normal, below normal. And when your dopamine drops below baseline, the world around you becomes dull, boring, heavy, and this is why studying feels impossible because your brain compares studying slow, quiet, effortful to the intense stimulation you just gave it. Your brain is not broken. You're not lazy. You didn't lose motivation. Your dopamine was hijacked. And once that happens, studying is not just boring. It feels painful. You'll sit down, open your book, and your brain will reject it. You'll think, I'll do it later. I need a break first. I just need to warm up. So you go back to your phone, which causes another spike and another crash. Your day becomes a zigzag of highs and lows. Energy here, dead exhaustion here, motivation here, avoidance here. You didn't fail. Your brain was just never given a fair start. Now here's where the difference between average students and top students becomes massive. Average students wake up and immediately overstimulate their brain. Top students do something radically different. They protect their dopamine baseline. They understand something most people will never learn. The first hour of your day decides your entire mindset. So what do they do? They wake up. They don't touch their phone. And they sit. They breathe. They meditate not for spirituality, not for peace. Not to be calm, they meditate to reset the mind into a state where learning feels naturally rewarding. Meditation does two extremely powerful things. It clears mental noise, so the brain has space to think, and it keeps dopamine from spiking. So focus feels enjoyable instead of forced. Just a few minutes of sitting in silence, breathing slowly, letting the mind settle, is enough to return the brain to baseline. And once you are at baseline, studying doesn't feel like a battle anymore. It feels right. It feels aligned. It feels like something you actually want to do. You begin to feel like the best version of yourself, not because of motivation, but because your brain is finally operating in the state where intelligence can grow. And this leads to the most critical moment of the entire routine, right after meditating. You begin studying immediately. No phone, no music, no planning, no preparing the desk, just begin. Most people sabotage themselves here. They think, I'll shower first. I'll eat first. I'll get comfortable first. No, because the moment you delay, you give your brain time to seek stimulation. And once it seeks it, it finds it. And once it finds it, the baseline is gone. The power is in starting while your mind is clear and your dopamine is stable. Even if you start with only 10 minutes, even if you don't feel ready, your mind aligns with the action. The brain rewards the act of beginning. The motivation comes after, not before. Top students understand this. They don't wait to feel like studying. They start and the feeling follows. This is why they don't burn out. This is why they don't have to force themselves. This is why studying becomes addicting to them. They let the brain enjoy the natural dopamine created through effort, curiosity, and real progress. And the longer they sustain this habit, the more intelligent they become. Not because their IQ changed, but because their brain learned to love learning. Your intelligence is not fixed. Your brain is always rewiring itself based on what it finds rewarding, and you have the ability to decide what that is. So tomorrow morning, the first move is simple. Don't pick up the phone, not for a single second. 
not for a quick look, not for a just checking. Sit, breathe, clear your thoughts. Remind yourself who you are becoming, then go straight into the work. Your future self is shaped in the first hour of your day. If you win that hour, you win the day. If you win the day, you win the week. If you win the week, you win the year. If you win the year, you win your life. But everything begins in those first five minutes. You've taken control of the first hour. You protected your baseline. You started studying while the mind was clear. But now comes the real challenge. How do you keep that focus for the rest of the day? Because the world is designed to pull you back. Your phone will light up. Your brain will whisper, just a quick break. Your attention will start drifting. This is where most people lose. They think discipline is about forcing themselves to focus. They think they have to fight distraction. They think they have to battle their own mind, but the smartest students don't fight. They design their environment so the battle never begins because your environment always wins. If your phone is next to you, even turned off, your brain knows it's there. There is a part of you waiting for stimulation. You cannot study with temptation within reach. So the first rule, put your phone in another room. Not face down, not on silent, not on do not disturb, physically away from you. You're not avoiding your phone because you're weak. You're avoiding it because your brain is smart. It knows what gives dopamine fastest. And it will choose the easiest source. Remove the easy source. And the brain naturally begins to find reward in the task in front of it, which leads to the second rule. Make progress visible. Your brain needs proof that effort is working. This is why some people study for hours and learn nothing. They don't see progress. So the brain does not release dopamine. The brain rewards completion, not effort. Every time you complete a small step, your brain gets a natural dopamine reward, not a spike, not a crash, just a steady flow. This is how studying becomes satisfying, not intense, not stressful, just steady, smooth, quiet, controlled. Now, here's where your identity begins to transform. At some point, you will feel resistance again. Your mind will wander. Your concentration will soften. Most students think this is failure. They think I lost focus. I ruined the day. No, this is where the real training happens. Focus strengthens in the moment you bring your mind back. The purpose of meditation was to teach you this. The mind will drift and you return it gently, not with frustration, not with anger, not with shame, just back to the page, back to the sentence, back to the work. Every time you return your attention, you are rewiring the brain to stay with one thing longer. This is how mental stamina is built. This is how attention grows. This is how intelligence becomes stable, reliable, and sharp, not through force through returning, but there is one more enemy to defeat, relapse, into high dopamine distraction. It usually happens in the afternoon. Your brain gets tired. Your discipline weakens. Your mind wants something easy. This is where you need a rule. No short dopamine between study sessions. No scrolling. No TikTok. No rapid swiping. No just one video, because just one is never one. It resets the brain to craving intensity again. Instead, your breaks must be low stimulation. Walk, stretch, drink water, look outside a window, wash your face. These activities recover your dopamine baseline. They restore your ability to enjoy focus. And slowly, day by day, something incredible begins to happen. You no longer need your phone to feel stimulated. You no longer feel bored when you sit with yourself. You no longer run from silence. Your mind becomes stronger than your impulses. You start to notice clarity. Where there used to be fog, confidence, where there used to be doubt, discipline, where there used to be avoidance and studying, the thing that once felt like a mountain, becomes something you choose, not because someone told you to, but because you can feel yourself evolving. This is where your identity completes its transformation. You are no longer chasing motivation. You are no longer waiting to feel ready. You are no longer fighting yourself. You are becoming someone built for mastery, someone who protects their mind someone who respects their attention, someone who chooses their future over their impulses. And when others look at you, they will think you're gifted. You're naturally disciplined. You're smarter than everyone, but only you will know the truth. You didn't get smarter. 
You just stop destroying your baseline. And once you understand that, your life becomes limitless.